So Donnie Dove wins it 192-149 over Mike Steinert, and he advances to this, the final match of uh, today's edition of Duckpin Magic, and the winner will advance to uh, face off against next week's show. Ken Palmer will step in. Ken, a, a three-time winner on the Pro Tour, the 1992 leader in Bowler of the Year points, and Joe, sure that's the most prestigious award that the... Uh, DPBA can hand out to a member as uh, Bowler of the Year. That means you've uh, done something over a course of a season, which uh, it's a complicated uh, formula, but you've, you've piled up enough points and you do it sort of like that. A, <laughs> uh, but Kenny well, is the leader. And to sort of uh, sum up the complication of it, it, it really is just uh, you're given points based on overall performance. And uh, if you happen to win that, it's because you performed better than anyone else overall and you you don't have to win a tour to win that i mean right. uh, as we mentioned uh, jeff Piles last year won three correct a uh, year before year before and, and was yep. was not bowler of the year well that's happened before i mean a number of people have uh, won bowler of the year it's all it's really dependent upon consistency and thus far kenny has uh, qualified in six of uh, the six events that have been held and the only bowler to do that and that's why he's on top well, the great Jimmy Dietz uh, was bowler of the year some five times and, and never had the fortune of winning a pro tour. Probably won everything else that <laughs> the bowling had to offer and set numerous records, but uh, just never got by the last game. Last two seasons, Ken Palmer's uh, game has really come together. We saw him win a year or so ago at the Greenway Bowl East by winning eight straight matches on a TV show. Phenomenal. TV taping, yeah, it was one of the more memorable events. And bowling, there's a strike. This one could uh, really shape up to be an interesting match, I'll tell you that much. We know what Donnie's been doing. We know how strong Kenny can be. Here's Donnie again at the line. i tell you what Kenny, over the last three years, has done. It's from the neck up. He is, he is focused so well, and he's really worked on that. He has really worked on that part of the game, the, the focusing, the concentration, the actually seeing what you want to do before you do it type thing that uh, the golfers and the tennis people, when you're out there all by yourself, uh, it's your game plan and, and your responsibility to carry that game plan through. And uh, nice shot. so many of us go out there without a plan. So if things do not work out right out of the gate. We don't have anything to turn to. Here you see, he knew he was gonna make it. He made it before he threw the ball. And you know, he actually saw it. And the gymnast, the, the Olympics this year, if you watched, uh, was what they kept emphasizing, how focused these athletes are. Drops nine on the spare. Kenny had 12.57 for his eight games of qualifying. And spent some time picking his brain. He traveled with us this trip. And, uh, he can travel with my crew and still concentrate. He's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Slid it in off the left side. Got enough, though, to make it count as a spare. And so Ken Palmer gets up, throws three marks in a row. Donnie Dove's got two, and uh, he'll be up in the third frame on lane number eight here at Town Hall Lanes in Johnston, Rhode Island. Tell you, it has to be an edge to to have won eight games in a row because you you know you can do it. Mm. And that was a 91. Then he turned around and he won what? I think it was four in a row and lost this a year. close one in 1992. So certainly knows how to win on TV. In those two years, he was nine and one on TV. That's or more than that. It was uh, what 12 and one. Fantastic. Anytime you go 13 uh, matches head-to-head -head with some of the best bowlers in the world and go 12-1, and one, that's pretty good. But when you start adding TV and the, the constraints of TV and the rigors of the day that uh, these bowlers go through when, when we do have a TV taping. Well, the, the conditions change so much, Mike, when you walk from we're taping on 7 and 8 and uh, we bowl their qualifying quarterfinals to the right-hand side down from 15 on down to 30. And... It's warm up here under the lights, and, and sometimes your concentration is, you just, you can't focus. You know, you get uh, started wrong, and of course, 
we just mentioned how many games he's bowled on television, so sort of old hat to him. Donnie running into a little bit of trouble this frame. A little tough luck. You pick the two pinner and then turn around, push it through the middle, an eight frame. Let's see what uh, Ken Palmer does here. He's enjoyed a, an outstanding year. First in bowler of the year points, second in average behind Wes Hamner. Sixth in money. And that, that could change because Wes uh, didn't qualify. No. I guess bowler of the year points and average, those two together show you the kind of consistency that someone's had during the course of the year, more so than even the uh, wins and losses and turn in terms of winning the tournament. Look at that shot. That's two now that he's picked up on lane number eight. We're going to take a look again at well, that. That's the concentration. And I mean, you, you still need a little luck, right? Yeah. It's got to come off the wall. But he created that. You know, he, he slid the pin, and uh, whether it comes back and gets it or not, it's a heck of a shot. 64 plus. Seven pin lead plus this ball. Nope, let that one get away a little bit. That makes Kenny angry. Uh, He's got a nine pin lead. Anytime you uh, put a fill of less than uh, five or so on a, on a mark, it's almost like giving the mark back in. Well, in, in when you pull a ball, or roll a ball in Kenny's case, you only have to get the ball. He, he's very smooth. Kenny only gets the ball over the line six, eight, ten inches, and he laid it down. And I, I'm, in talking to Kenny, it's just, you almost really feel like there's no excuse for it. You, you fell asleep. Well, it leaves the door open a little bit for Donnie Dove to get back in this match. We approach the uh, midway point. Turning point. Yep, nine, ten pin... Uh, match here and there's a shot well and as we mentioned uh, in the, the Steiner Dove match uh, what happens to old Mo when you when a guy does that he, it's just uh, he had him down it was put him away time and he let him up well we saw the triple last match triple the first match he bowled uh, today's show he's used the, the strike very effectively well when you get this caliber of bowler down. You gotta keep him down, because if he gets back up, uh, he's rested. <laughs> There's a double. I tell you, if he throws a triple every game, he could stay around for a while. If, if you remember when Kenny went that stretch, uh, that's what he was doing. Hold like he, about a 180 average, I think. Oh, he was phenomenal. See the pin action? The, the decks are clean, the lanes are clean, and clean lanes are what gives you the, the turns, the ability to, to turn the ball, to get the ball moving. Oh, <laughs> and he's shaking his head. He's not going to give it back, though, after he just saw Donnie jump no. up and throw a double at him. But you learn. a little fortunate there. You learn through experience. You do not apologize for this. Uh, they'll get even soon enough. See, but Wick, he did the same thing. He guarded a little against, uh, uh, against pulling it, where he hit the 2-8 on the spare. But Kenny's got to get the ball up over the line. The last two balls he's laid down which means he's throwing it from his ankle. And that's, uh, I don't care how hard you throw it, what angle or how good you are, you've got to get the ball past that left ankle and come up through it. Let's see what happens. He's going through his routine. Yep, got that uh, deep breath and off he rolls. Push through the middle. Might have it jacked up just a little bit himself, uh, Mike. Uh, the mile, mile, two mile an hour quicker than he should and, and still again he laid that ball on the floor he's not now that he come up through that's a he's been making these shots <laughs> it was a good count yep counted on the strike Kenny it's such a fine line because he is so smooth and he steps Donnie Dove working on double seventh frame winner gets a week off and then we bring him back in two weeks to uh, face off against next week's show's winner. Big ball. Could be a big turning point in the match. Triple! And of 
care who you are, how much bowling you've seen, start putting that many strikes on the board as Donnie has had in these three games. It's pretty impressive. Bang. Watch the five pin go down last. 11 strikes in 27 frames. Let's see what happens here in the eighth frame. Just hold on to this replay because that's something that uh, you've seen Donnie do a bunch of times here. 12 and 28 frames. Ooh, look at him. And you see the ball. It still did not hit the five pin. He just... Uh, and Kenny needs some uh, help in a hurry. Well, Donnie's been supplying the fireworks. Wow. What's he have, five this game alone? Five strikes for Donnie Dove this game alone. Three frames ago. Uh, as hot as he is, we have to give him some time off, too, <laughs> if he wins the match. Well, I tell you, his opponents will be glad to hear that. on the board 125 plus in the ninth and uh, I'm not even gonna <laughs> try to tell you what Donnie has I know he has uh, a bunch 60 pins uh, 30 in the fifth and 30 in the sixth already which gives him 117 plus a couple more balls well now you'll have to add him up you're hoping that you go all the way so you didn't have to do that it, yes it's a much easier <laughs> About a 38 pin lead in this ball. Oh my, Donnie. 160 and a 45 pin lead. Tell you, Kenny, if Kenny were to strike out, he's going to shoot 175, and Donnie would need seven, six to tie, seven to win. Uh, so if Donnie, as soon as Donnie gets seven, we can go to the refrigerator. Okay. So Donnie Dove looking to close out Ken Palmer here in the tent. How about that? Maybe I'll throw two more and shoot 199. He had 192 the last game and about 530 or 40 for his three games. Uh, pretty strong. And here you'll see it. I think we've seen this before. <laughs> and he's used both sides uh, of the head pin. Both well, pockets to, that's uh, what I was speaking about before, with. Mike. And when you know that it's that wide, and all you have to do is execute. You know, it, it's no pointing. It's no, well, I can't go to the left pocket. It's not treating me right. Uh, you get treated right. Oh, oh. I think he let up on that one, you know. <laughs> and he's going to go quick for the seven pin, and that is it. 189. Right, he follows up a 192 game with a 189, and uh, Johnny Dove will advance to uh, a week from next week's show, and he'll take on next week's show's winner. We'll wrap things up from Town Hall Lanes coming up after this. It's exciting, it's entertaining, it's challenging, it's fun. It's Duck Pin Magic. Duck Pin Bowling is lots of fun for the whole family. There's no need to be an expert. Duck Pin Bowling is easy to learn, but it's the challenge that'll keep you coming back. Even little hands can control the ball in Duck Pin Bowling. Join a league or we'll help you start one. And with duck pin bowling, there's more bowling for your buck. Discover duck pin bowling and you'll discover duck pin magic at any of these locations. Duck pin bowling is fun for everyone.
and bowling is fun for everyone. So join a league. Try open bowling with friends. Or plan a birthday party for one of the kids. Get out and experience Duckpin magic for yourself. Call your local Duckpin Bowling Center today to find out how you can make the ducks fly. They're listed in the yellow pages. Get out and bowl duck pins today. It's exciting. It's entertaining. It's challenging. It's fun. It's duck pin magic. Duck pin bowling is lots of fun for the whole family. There's no need to be an expert. Duck pin bowling is easy to learn, but it's the challenge that'll keep you coming back. Even little hands can control the ball in duck pin bowling. Join a league or we'll help you start one. And with duck pin bowling, there's more bowling for your buck. Discover duck pin bowling and you'll discover duck pin magic at any of these locations. Duck pin bowling is fun for everyone. fun for everyone. So join a league. Try open bowling with friends. Or plan a birthday party for one of the kids. Get out and experience Duckpin magic for yourself. Call your local Duckpin Bowling Center today to find out how you can make the ducks fly. They're listed in the yellow pages. Get out and bowl duck pins today. Well, we started with 13 bowlers. We're down to nine. We've got more action for you on Duckpin Magic next week. Join me, Mike Sella, and Bob Ferry when all of it comes to you right here. See you again next time on Duckpin Magic. <laughs>